Every day in the greater Toronto area, half a million people who work in office buildings must drive to get to work. As recently as 1980, this wasn't the case. Most office buildings were located on the Young University subway line. This changed with the suburbanization of office development. Most of those jobs are unreachable by rapid transit. This short video explains why this happened and how the regional relief line, otherwise known as SmartTrack, will improve commuting for all of us. Let's go back in time to 1900, when all major office space, stores and entertainment were located within 300 meters of Young Street. For the first half century, all new office space was built in this corridor. By 1947, City Council decided to invest in the first subway in Toronto. Over the next 35 years, all office buildings were constructed in close proximity to Young Street. By 1970, the subway was extended along the Bloor Danforth right of way. During the early part of the decade, the Young Line was extended to North York, and later on, the Spadina extension was completed to meet the University Line. The 400 series of highways expanded during the same time. By 1980, the subway system was virtually complete, the Shepherd Line being added in 2000. The bulk of office towers and the ensuing employment remained concentrated along Young Street. At the same time in Markham, there was virtually no office development. Similarly in Mississauga. So what changed to lead to the intense concentrations of office space that are now found off the subway line? Suburban office development began with the paving of the Don Valley. And office development soon followed. At the same time the subway was extended to North York, both attracted the same amount of office development. Along the 427 corridor, during the same period, we see some office development. The subway to Islington was completed, and it attracted a few office buildings initially. The white line represents the division between the cities of Toronto and Mississauga. From 1980 to 2000, the development of office space virtually stopped in the west end of Toronto and almost exclusively occurs in the airport corporate centre. In Markham, we see similar patterns of development. Office construction almost stops on the Don Valley Parkway and moves north. This brisk development all occurs before the opening of the 407 in 1997, which was later extended further east. Improved highway accessibility meant that by 2014, Markham had 100,000 car-dependent workers. The 400 series highways have typically fostered commercial development. Take Mississauga. In the mid-1930s, construction of the QEW had begun. By 1960, construction of the 401 highway was well underway. In 1980, Mississauga had only a handful of office buildings. But by 1990, this had all changed. Mississauga was experiencing rapid growth particularly along the 401 corridor between Meadowvale and Airport Corporate Center. By 2014, in the same Mississauga corridor along the 401, a comparable distance to the Young Subway from Bloor to Finch, there are now the same number of people employed in offices, except they all have to drive to work. We've just seen how the location of office buildings impacts transportation in the GTA. Now let's add high-density condominium development, which began in 2000. The majority of this residential intensification occurred in downtown Toronto. In the spring of 2014, the Ontario government announced that it would invest in increased service on the seven commuter GO transit lines. These lines are called Regional Express Rail, or RER. Let's look at how they connect to the employment in office clusters. In Mississauga, the major employment centers do not connect to the GO system, with the exception of the southern fringe of Meadowvale. In Markham, the go Stouffville line comes closest to connecting to employment. Here, in green, we see the GO-RER network. 
When we add the existing subway system, in white, and in yellow, the new Eglinton LRT, the Spadina subway extension, and the Union Pearson Express, we see the extent of recent transit investment. The Strategic Regional Research Alliance developed the concept of connecting the two largest concentrations of employment in the 905 area, Markham and Mississauga, to the existing transit network. The result is the Regional Relief Line, otherwise known as Smart Track. The Regional Relief Line uses existing or approved transit corridors. In Markham, the Regional Relief Line provides three stops that, along with the use of new technologies, creates the potential to connect many jobs directly to transit. This line can move people in both directions and support the 12% of the labor force living in the central part of Scarborough who work in Markham. For them, it will provide direct access. The regional relief line improves the potential for connecting Scarborough Town Center to Centennial College. In downtown Toronto, the regional relief line will connect with the college streetcar. It will provide options for users of the Queen and the King streetcar lines. For those using these highly subscribed routes, this will provide alternative and faster ways to get to work. In Mississauga, the regional relief line will connect to the airport corporate center with its 56,000 jobs. At Pearson Airport, an additional 40,000 employees could use the regional relief line with the simple addition of a two-kilometer express bus service. In the future, the line could be extended under the runways to the terminals. Future extension of the regional relief line along the 401 would connect the balance of Mississauga's major employment centers. In the next 30 years, the GTA is expected to attract 1 million additional jobs. All of these new jobs will be housed in buildings that have not yet been built. Where they are built and their access to transit will define the quality of life for everyone in the region for decades to come.